Hello, everybody. Welcome to our final video. We're going to be going through and analyzing what we just did by converting absorption to variable costing. Okay, let's take a look at the question we just did. So we had absorption costing, we had to convert it to variable costing. And going through and doing this, right, what's what are kind of the trickier parts here? Well, we've got a fully expense at our fixed factory overhead. So what I had to go through and do is we had to go through and look at the fixed factory overhead per unit under absorption, multiply it by those units produced so that amount gets fully expensed. The other part that's a little bit tricky about this one over here is going to be the SG&A. For absorption, this will include both variable and fixed. So we had to figure out what the sales commissions were then we had to back these out of the total amount of the overhead. So we're now at this point where we're going to go through and take a look and check our work. So our net income under variable costing was 5,527,200. Our net income under absorption costing for the same period was 4,327,000. Okay, so my net income under absorption so my difference is going to be over here of 1.2 million. Now, what have we always said about the differences, right? It's always going to be in fixed factory overhead. That's the big difference between these two methodologies. So when I look at this one over here for 2027, let's go ahead and look at our beginning inventory fixed factory overhead. So my units that I went through when I expensed during the current period are going to be 8,000. Now something really important, okay, under variable costing, I sold 26,000 units. So there's going to be no real difference in terms of my units produced in 2027, because I'm fully taking these fixed costs, these fixed costs out of the current year production. Where the difference is going to come in, though, is in the beginning inventory amount. The beginning inventory amount under variable costing was 156 per unit. However, under absorption, it was 306 per unit. So as we go through and look at this, right, the difference over here is going to be the fixed factory overhead that was expensed in my beginning inventory units. So my per unit for this 8,000 of the beginning inventory. Remember, because under variable costing, this was already expensed. So I'm gonna take 8,000 units, I'm gonna multiply it by 150. And this is gonna give me 1.2 million. The ending inventory fixed factory overhead is not applicable because all the all 18,000 units were sold during the period. Okay, now that's 2027. Let's take a look at 2028. Okay, so I've got my net income under a variable, my net income under absorption, my net income under variable costing was 3,229. My net income under absorption costing was 3,404. Hmm, what's my difference? Okay, so my difference here is going to be 175, meaning my absorption is higher than my variable. What's the cause of it? It's always going to relate to the fixed factory overhead that was or was not expensed during the period. So over here, let's take a look at this particular time period. I sold 24,000 units and I didn't do anything with my beginning inventory. And why? Because I all I needed was 24,000. So I took it all from the current period. So if I look at my ending inventory, fixed factory overhead from the current year production period only, right? This is 25,000 units produced minus 24,000 units sold, right? Very important. Those remaining units, I still have 2,000 units 
in my fixed factory overhead that are sitting in my beginning inventory, right? Basically, I have 2,000 of these units that are still sitting around, but those don't come into play because I didn't expense any of it under absorption costing. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to say my ending inventory fixed factory overhead, again, from the current year production only, this is going to be my units, are going to be 1,000 units. The 2,000 units from 1231-26 are not applicable because these were not expensed to cost of goods sold under absorption costing. Okay, so my per unit for my ending inventory fixed factory overhead is going to be 175. If I multiply 1,000 units by 175, I get 175,000. So just remember, why is this difference happening? Because over here under a variable costing, we're expensing the entire amount of fixed factory overhead. Of this amount, this is for 25,000 units. I only sold 24,000. So this is what is causing the difference between the two methodologies. So in any event, I hope you found these videos helpful. Q things just to kind of keep in the back of your mind, right? So these last series of questions that I went through vary probably on the more complicated side in terms of variable versus absorption costing. However, if you can go through and do these questions, it's gonna show that you have the mastery of the subject. So in any event, I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Please feel free to leave any questions you might have below and appreciate you liking and subscribing to the series. Have a great day.